hey welcome back to second round gaming i'm austin we're here with massive chalice our last episode went pretty well we went from year 149 all the way up to year 170 without any board wipes we fought a whole battle and it went really well um we just picked a bunch of new regents it's looking pretty good um only two cadence markers this time instead of three which is nice as well it's a, it's a tough choice here. There's no mark of the cadence on this keep over here. You know, my main reasoning to like towards always picking a region or territory that has a mark of the cadence on there is that it erases one. And if you defend in a region that doesn't have any, then no mark gets erased. It kind of commits that this mark is going to stay there uh, for good. And that's kind of how we get into a situation where like up here, there's two already. There's one and there's one because those are kind of they kind of remain permanent since we can only relieve one mark of the cadence at a time. Um, so I'm definitely gonna protect this region even though there's no actual building there, just because of that. So yeah, we lost Abel, but somehow Andrew, does he have longevity or something? He does, so yeah, Andrew's 86. And I will say it is really cool to put units with longevity into the Vanguard. <laughs> Just because of how long they, they honestly stick out here. And Christy, since she leveled up, she's got that like poison uh, <laughs> relic going on now. So we really just have to bring in our new Zelikar, who's already been chosen because of the relic. So it's going to be Jared, 34. So everybody's a little bit older in our, relic, our, our vanguard right now. Probably means that we're going to start losing these people around the same time. Obviously, Christy and Andrew first. Um, but yeah, I'm really loving having three Caper Jacks. I think that's been going really, really well. Just means our Vanguard's a little bit beefier. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Let's go. Again, we're in the risky time where last playthrough, this is when we were starting to board wipe all over the place. Good luck. And so I'm, I'm just going to stay really vigilant. But I think having the Shadow Jacks who can stealth... Um, in addition to just everything else has been really helpful. I'm gonna go to the left this time just because the placement of our Units that can go into stealth is a little bit better over here. This map actually isn't very good for stealth Now Olivier come up here unstealth first just to see what's out here Okay, it looks like we're pretty decent right now, so we can probably have everybody just move up Once we get out of this little starting area we can stealth up a little bit better it seems if I remember correctly but yeah it's really nice to see all these units with health ranges that are in the 20s to the 30s as opposed to health ranges that in the past were in like the 7 to 18 I really cannot believe that Andrew at 86 is is one of our one of our dudes but the cricket is still here Okay, so we're gonna have to be a lot more careful in this run because we're facing cradles. And if there's anything that I learned from season one, if there's anything that I learned from Massive Chalice in general, is that uh, cradles are real shitty, as are bulwarks, and uh, they will screw us up any opportunity that they get. Christy, I'm gonna keep back here. Because Christy can't stealth, so uh, basically our position is revealed wherever Christy is. But these guys don't see us yet. I just want to get our units, especially our Caper Jacks, since they are melee fighters, as close to these cradles as possible. We can technically start hitting them from here, but not with all of our guys, so I want us a little bit closer. Just so we also know exactly what we're working with, exactly who we've got around. I think Olivier might get revealed if we're right here. So I'm gonna have him come up here. Last thing I would want is for a little seed to reveal one of our units and then have that cradle then just unload on him. So in that same deal, I'm gonna have Andrew just move up right here, but still stay stealthed. And Christy, I'm gonna risk it and have Christy come here. That may reveal us to the cradle, I'm not sure. 
And actually, because I'm not sure, I'm going to have Christy come over here. Everybody else will stay put. Doesn't look like they're alerted quite yet. But this gives us a good opportunity. There we go. Now we're out in the open. Now it's happening. Because, yeah, once we're revealed, then, then they're immediately going to start coming out in droves. Okay. So let's see. Christy could throw a flask, but also could do 30 to 37 damage, which is amazing. Jared can do a good amount as well, and Andrew, with the point blank, can do a lot of damage too. But Christy actually, weirdly enough, because of the hack and slash ability, can do the most. So I'm going to have her run up here instead of using her flask, and just take this cradle out right now. Hell yeah. Now we definitely have a bunch of seeds to worry about, but I think we can we can manage those. So Olivier, I'm going to start with first. I'm going to actually have Olivier come and do a knockback on these two. Nice. We have Jared come in. Do a knockback on these two now. Awesome. And it looks like the cradle wasn't advanced, so the seeds that are coming out of that one are going to be just our standard little boy seeds, which is good. Gonna have Leanne. I'm actually going to leave it to Andrew to do a knockback shot here. Oof. Not what I wanted to miss. Because of that, I'm going to have Leanne just try a knockback shot on this one. So we're only going to be hit by one of the seeds. Nice. And then since we haven't aggroed any other enemies, I'm going to try and keep it that way and just keep everybody exactly where they are. Have Andrew just do a standard one here. Oof, should have done that point blank. Leanne, since their aim is so bad, I'm going to have him go for this one too. Because that glancing blow will always do a little bit of damage, which means they're kind of a guaranteed shoe in for any sort of weak enemy. Um, on that same note, Jared, see, Olivier still has pretty bad accuracy. I'm feeling like that really comes down to the relics and that Jared has the last friend, which is the most leveled up of all the relics. We're going to have Jared go for this seat over here. Nice. And it's really up to Olivier and Christy now on the remaining ones. So I'm going to have Christy try with this guy. Nice. And then Olivier, it's a 48% versus a 68, but I'm wary about moving over here because we might reveal something. So we're going to try from here. Nice. That was an advanced seed too, so it would have done more damage to us. This other seed, if they hit any of our caber jacks that have a rebound, it'll kill them. Just, just by hitting him. Uh, unfortunately, Olivier doesn't have rebound. <laughs> But no worries, we can actually have Leanne come up and just finish that up right now. Now, since we don't know where anybody else is, I'm going to move our guys back into stealth mode. And just have them start to creep up a little bit more. Okay, so we know we got a seat over there. And that's actually good positioning for Andrew to come up. And just take him out really quick, hopefully. 17 to 22 wouldn't take him out completely. Uh, well, maybe it would. I get way too excited about this. Have Jared come up here stealth as well. 
And then Christy, since we know there aren't any enemies, I'll have her just move right here. So I'm going to have Andrew, since Andrew's already over here, we're just going to have him stealth over here. You can see that there's a cradle actually right behind that log. So because of that, I'm going to try and switch things up just a little bit. Olivier's going to come over here just to get a better lay of what exactly we're facing. So yeah, it's definitely a cradle and three seeds so far. Definitely don't want to reveal ourselves too early. I'm going to have Jared come all the way over here. Just so we can get as close to this cradle as possible before we have to attack. Leanne will come up to this section. And Christy will actually stay put because I don't know how closer they can go without being at risk. I'm going to move Olivier back just by one because of these advanced seeds. Yep. Still wasn't enough. Oof. We got lucky there. Obviously the cradle is number one on our list. Christy has amazing movement, so she can actually come up and hit this guy with the hack and slash. I'm going to move her into that obscured spot as well. I might have not hit the hack and slash ability on accident because I thought she was supposed to attack twice. But either way, it's fine. Jared's here and can finish this cradle off. And then again, it's just spawning random seeds, so I'm not going to focus on those guys. I'm definitely going to just focus on those advanced seeds right now. Okay, Leanne could do a knockback, but I don't think it's actually going to knock that guy back, so we're going to do it for this one. Fingers crossed it works. Nice. And then we've got Andrew over here who could do a point blank. I'm gonna move Andrew up here just to see how much damage he does without doing a point blank. 17 to 22, pretty good. I'm worried about moving Olivier too far up. So we're gonna have Olivier try to hit this guy. And he actually did. That frees Andrew up a little bit to focus on, not those ones, but either to hit these guys or to take out this one seed. Since the seeds too do technically do some damage, that is tempting, and I will take it. Just to get one enemy out of the way. So yeah, those advanced seeds are stunned. One of them wasn't close enough to Leanne. The other one will hit him, but that'll be okay. He can take it. And the rebound actually stunned both of those guys, which is amazing. Got an advanced seed over there. And then our standard seeds here, but they, again, they won't do too much damage. And actually, if they do focus on Christy, Christy gets fury every time she gets hit, so that's pretty nice. Okay, yeah, it looks like we didn't use the hack and slash ability last time with Christy. I'm not really keen on using it this time either. Um, I'm going to try actually just to do a combo here and do a knockback with Jared. I should have done it from the other direction because the advanced seed is hard to do a knockback for. That's on me. So we're going to have Christy then give this a shot. Um, just a standard attack though. Perfect. And then Leanne doesn't have the knockback ability anymore. Olivier does. And so does Andrew. So I'm going to move Andrew up here. See if we can't do a knockback on these two. Damn it. So in that case, it's up to Olivier to hopefully knock these guys back so they can't attack on their turn. Not quite. Okay, our luck is running out a little bit, but fear not. Leanne's getting light on health. So last turn. 
I'm a little bit worried we're going to start to get overwhelmed here. Um, so I don't think I'm going to have time in the future for Leanne to heal. I'm going to move Leanne right here so that we're kind of walling him off from our other units. And then I'm going to have him heal. Okay, and then there's our Wrinkler. That's our third enemy of the mission. There's probably a couple of those hiding around. And Leanne's the one with rebound, so I hope that they focus on him. Just because it does him do some damage, and hopefully it will stun him like it. Yeah, there we go. Because I'll stun both of those guys for next turn. Okay, now Christy still has the hack and slash ability, but the Wrinkler's kind of disappeared. I want to use that on the Wrinkler, obviously, if at all possible. I have Jared just give this advanced seed another shot, maybe? Or we can have Jared come back over here to just kind of try and regroup. I think I'm actually leaning towards that, just so we can get our units together, since there are a lot of seeds over here, and that's going to make it so that the Wrinkler's farther away from us. It gives us a good opportunity to potentially with the knockback flask. Actually, this guy's a little bit too far away though. So let's see what happens if we move Christy up here and what our ratio on these knockbacks are. So I don't want to accidentally kill any of our people. So I don't really feel quite comfortable enough throwing any of these. We could throw it here. We have enough flask to where it really isn't too much of an issue. So why not? Again, it gets those units out of there so we don't have to worry about them. Andrew doesn't have um, the uh, knockback, but they do have the point blank, so we're going to take a shot here. Nice. And then it's really just on these guys. Olivier also doesn't have that knockback ability, so we're just going to give one of these seeds a shot. And that worked pretty well. It's not dead, but he's close. As close as can be. And we're gonna try with this knockback again with Leanne. Because, I mean, why not? Okay. We have a couple more options here this time around. Leanne. Since they don't have the knockback available anymore, I'm gonna try and just have them come down here. And hopefully take this guy out. Not quite, okay. Part of the reason I'm doing that is because I do want Christy to be able to use their flask, but I still don't know if it's going to be the right time for it. Hmm. I think Olivier needs to just move back and heal, especially because Olivier doesn't have that knockback. Andrew's still on cooldown for everything. Let's see if Andrew can't just take this guy out. Nice. That's what I wanted to see for sure. And I think that opens up the floor enough to where if we move Christy maybe like here, her flask has got a... 100% shot of hitting there, 100% shot of hitting there. I'm gonna do it here. And that killed one of our seeds, basically killed one of our the other seeds, because it's gonna take corrosive damage over time. That frees Jared up to run over here. It's got a 66% versus just a standard attack. I'm gonna shoot for the standard attack on this one. Nice. So we're still going to take some damage from these remaining two seeds. But this will probably be their last turn. Which is good, because we have a Wrinkler and a Seed, at least one of each, still rolling over in that section over there. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to have Leanne try yet again with this guy. Damn it. I'll have Olivier do the same. Nice. Now we'll move Andrew up here. See if we can't see any of the enemies that are lurking. Doesn't look like it, so we'll have Andrew just focus on this guy. And I know we've got two enemies over to the right of us, so we're just going to focus on heading over there next. Um, Christy, I'll have move up just a little bit, but not too much. And then actually have her use her health file, get her back up to full. And we're going to have Jared do the same thing, right back up to full health. Perfect. That's exactly where I wanted these guys to go, pretty much. Okay, there are three of them. Good to know, good to know. Got a couple options here. 24 to 31, a 96% on a knockback that could stun them too. I'm going to do that. Damn, on a 96. And we get a cradle revealed in that fashion too. Well, that is just poor stuff. I'm going to hack and slash this wrinkler, then we've got a 100 on it. Which I'm a big fan of. But since we can see that cradle in the distance, I'm going to try and keep all of our units a little bit separate, just because their shot, if it's next to a couple of units, it can it can hurt them both pretty heavily. Okay, Olivier though can come up and try and do some damage to this seed. I really hope the Elite Caber training kind of fixes this because Olivier and Leanne, just with where their levels are on their relics, it is starting to really, really show when they face advanced units that they are not really holding their weight. And then, just because I don't want this seed to be a trouble, I'm going to try the point blank here. Nice. Because we're going to have to deal with this cadence. I mean, not this cadence. We're going to have to deal with this cradle. So I don't want our units heading into it too weak. Oof. Gosh, that's just so much damage. Thankfully, again, we've got units that are strong enough to where they can withhold it, but it's it's terrifying to see. 34 to 41 on Christy for that, which is just amazing. 30 to 34 on those flasks too, though. I'm going to have Christy come up here. Just to see how close she can really get. 34 to 40 on the standard hit. 26 to 30 on a knockback. But the knockback is going to throw him into that tree. Which I desperately want. He actually ended up doing 43 damage. Ridiculous. Alright, we'll have Jared come up and just try and hit this seed here. Nice. And since Leanne has knockback available again, we're going to try to knock these two into each other. Damn it. Okay, since that didn't work, I'm going to have Olivier just focus on a standard hit on this guy. Mm. Because we still got to worry about Christy just being light on health here. So I'm going to move Andrew up as well and try and take this guy out. No, it's the worst time for that to happen. Perfect. They did it to each other, thankfully. Okay, we got a wrinkler right there. We've got to be careful on Christy just because of how light they are health-wise. I thought that that cradle was stunned, but I guess th since they were stunned, they only had one use for attack, which means they could make a seed, but that's pretty much all they can do. See, Olivia still has that knockback available, but so does Andrew. And if Andrew moves up here just by this little weak seed, he can actually hit these guys again. Nice. That levels everything up for Jared to come down here and take out that cradle if we want. I'm going to have Christy throw another flask, though, and do that herself. That was amazing. Your advice? 
Well, that's just three weak seeds down there. So I'm going to see if Olivier, since he doesn't have as good, he can't sprint down there. Um, so I'm going to have Jared take this guy out. Nice. And we'll have Leanne try for this guy here, because it's pretty much guaranteed with the glancing blow. Just because Christie's so light on health, I'm going to have Olivier come down here and try for a knockback on the two weaker seeds. Nice. That way, Christie doesn't get overwhelmed by the weaker seeds. I mean, they usually don't do too much damage, but you never know. And it's just going to be these remaining seeds left that we got to worry about. Alright, now I'm just kind of looking at levels-wise over here. I'm, Andrew might as well take this guy out. The standard seeds don't really give too much experience, so it doesn't really matter either way, I guess. So that I think I'm going to have them still go to the what I'm assuming are our weaker level relics, since they're doing less damage and they're, they're hitting less frequently, which is going to be Olivier's and Leanne's. Nice. Awesome. Wow. Watching this was just like seeing the battle at Screed's Gate again. We didn't tell you about that one, did we? I don't believe so. Screed's Gate. House of the Thieves without houses. <laughs> Man, well, the Ebbet Marsh has been saved. 30 kills. Um, everybody pretty much got a level up. Christy hit level 7. Andrew's at 6. Everybody's doing really good. Most importantly, though, Jared and Olivier both have rebound now, and Andrew can either do stand ground or blind shot. Again, it's kind of bittersweet because Andrew, being as old as he is, he's not really going to have the time to fight another battle. My bet is. So a blinding shot is a non-damaging direct shot that severely reduces sight and accuracy, which is pretty nice, but stand ground is gained a bonus to max hit points and immunity to knockback effects. I'm a big fan of that. Um, again, I mean, we're fighting every 10 years or so. Andrew would be like almost 100. So this is likely his last battle. It's likely Christie's too, but boy, did they go out on a high note. We're still keeping it level. There's only five cadence markers in general. Two of them are over here. One of them is over here, which means only two markers of the cadence are actually in regions that we don't want to lose. We've got 14 years left on our weapons training. Relax. It's not an attack. Huh, okay. Or maybe you shouldn't relax. The rally. So we've worked with this one before in season one. So today, Andrew Foxfire and David Castillan attended an anti-war rally outside the capital as peacekeepers and the speaker, a highly respected elder from the Cinderlands, made some very inflammatory statements about you and the war. Things got out of hand, and now the speaker is in crucial condition thanks to your heroes, and a growing mass of unruly citizens are fuming outside of the capital. Nobody knows what to do. Again, this comes down to kind of the conundrum that I got of, I don't want to choose the same thing that I chose last time, because last time I sent the heroes to jail for 10 years. but. And it went really well, honestly. Part of that, though, is that last time the two units weren't even a part of our standard vanguard or houses. This time, Andrew is a part of our vanguard, and David is from the Castilian household. That being said, both of them are really old, and so I wouldn't mind sending them to jail. I don't think they're going to fight with us again, and I know for a fact that that quells the fears of the citizens. Alternatively, so we can say that we'll punish the heroes but actually do nothing, or we can do nothing and hope that it blows over. Oh gosh, I really don't want to choose something different, but I've done it up until now. I feel like I would be not getting a full playthrough really of Massive Chalice if I wasn't at least trying to see what happens if I do something else. I could say that I'll punish the heroes but actually do nothing, but I feel like that will increase anger more over time so i'm just gonna do nothing and hope that it blows over and it's probably a terrible idea dang disappearing act you tell andrew and david to wait and see what happens but they don't act reassured that night the speaker passes away and the mob is overtaken by rage that they storm the capital in search of the two heroes responsible 
Dang, so this actually had some unintended side effects because I'm pretty sure that since Andrew didn't die and he just went missing like the cricket would, um, our relic is stuck with him. Thankfully, Zeke has a relic that once he passes away, hopefully will be created. But if that doesn't happen, then the Foxfires yet again will be out of a relic, those elusive, elusive relics. Hopefully, our cricket shows back up, but so far in my entire playthrough of Massive Chalice, nobody that's gone missing has come back. Does that mean they all show up in the year 300? Maybe. Hopefully. Please. Okay. Dang. So yeah. Where did we throw Zeke? Yeah, Zeke is 78. He's got longevity though, so he might be sitting there for a while. But he's got the other possibility of a Foxfire Relic. Ahad has passed away. Gotta pick another Sage right. And Ao Burns is 55 now, so even though he's bountiful, we're not gonna use him. Ah, oh, Christy has died. She did a wonderful job in her last battle, and the Hand of Fate is now level 5 and can be passed down. Let's take a look at our heroes. So, Sianan, Infertile, and Hardy, Wily and Patriotic. R really a perfect match for this. It's cool to see since um, we've had some, some switching that um, we've got some fraternization here in the siblings. Frederick is nearsighted, so we're not going to go with that. Trisha. Nope. Hell. Seal. Nah. Antonio. Mm -mm. And Rio's only two. So Sionan is the one that we would choose anyway. She's infertile, so she's not in contention for the Regency. That works perfectly. This was... it couldn't have... Yeah, I'm not the right one to do this. Good enough. Re has passed away. We've got to pick a new partner to the Zelikars. Um, Let's look. So Darlene, strong-willed but clumsy. Katie, strong-willed but slow learner and slow. Zem, decent but a lot older. And Trish is older too, so Darlene's really our best bet. Decreased dexterity is not great, but for a caber jack, it's not too big of a deal. Let's take stock at who's in our houses too. So yeah, we've got two people in the Zelikars, three people in the Foxfires, two in the Castillons. We're still doing good. Zeke is 83. Crazy. Those old boys. Oh, speaking of which, Zeke's passed away. <sighs> okay. Well... Let's look here. Now we've got some people in our vanguard that would pass on a bunch of stuff. Young and hard and pessimistic is really good, but it means that the relic is gonna be sitting for really a long time. That being said, once we get too far down here, it's not too much experience. Trish is a good bet because she's 58 she's probably not going to be in that position for too long but she passes on young at heart patriotic avenger and alert which i love so we're going to go with trisha give her something to do especially because she was married to brian but brian passed away so she hasn't been doing too much for quite a while oh and that means zeke did not pass on a relic so the foxfires again are out they don't have a relic. Well. Okay. Nobody's got high fertility anymore, so it's really just all traits. But it's age, too. Slow and slow learner I really don't like, but nearsighted and slow learner really doesn't help. Zem is 59, so we could be in a bit of a drought as far as our house goes. We could have Katie, though. 
And Simon has increased dexterity, increased sight range, so that could help offset some of the tough stuff. I think we're gonna do that. I can't believe the Foxfires lost a relic. God damn. And they've had three heroes die that don't Here have relics. Come. We've gone ahead and sent word to evacuate. <sighs> now it's on you to make sure it's only temporary. Anyway, we've got another battle coming up. This one's going to be potentially a little more sketchy because we don't have our, our cricket, our boy, um, and he took a relic with us and then Zeke passed away, didn't give us a relic, so that means the Foxfires will be going out there with just a standard crossbow. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.